Hello everybody, welcome back to your recording class. My name is McKay Tebbs, and today we're gonna to be talking about making um, submixes, and we're gonna create submixes for different tracks in our session. We're also gonna talk about mix groups and how to create those and what they're used for. So um, submixes are used when you have a lot of tracks of the same instrument and you um, want to control them all with just one fader instead of with all the faders that are there. Uh, a good example of a submix would be the drums. Drums often take up as many as 10 or 12 tracks in a session. And, um, and so, you know, when you're setting the levels on the drums, you're grabbing each one, you're getting them just right. And then you go to work on the guitars and vocals, you adjust those, and then the drums are too soft or too loud, and so you need to pull them all down, and you have to do it one at a time. But with a submix, you can control all those drum patterns tracks with just one fader and use that one fader to move them up and down. Um, so anyway, we're going to be doing that. So here is my mix window of my session. And on the bottom, we see all my drum tracks. They're the ones in light blue. And starting over here, we have a kick drum, a snare drum, a snare bottom, a hat, hi-hat, tom, floor tom, overhead, and room. First of all, let me encourage you to just select all of these. I'm gonna click on room, then I'm gonna come over here, and before I click on kick, I'm gonna push shift. And when I, sh put, when I push down shift and click on, on kick, it selects all of those tracks together at the same time. And that becomes really efficient when you're trying to work on the tracks and group them together like this and make a submix. Um, the first thing I have to do is I have to create a submix track from an aux input track. So I'm gonna go shift command N, and then that gives me my new tracks um, window. And um, very important, first of all, do you have stereo tracks in this uh, submix you're trying to mix down? If the answer is yes, then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have a stereo um, aux input track here. And on these drums, we have those overhead drum mics that are stereo mics, so we, so we definitely wanna make sure this is a stereo track. And then you just select aux input track. Now watch where this input track is placed, this aux input track. It's placed right next to the group that I had selected here to the drum group. Now it's not a big deal. If you hadn't selected it, it would have been placed clear over here to the outside and you could have clicked on it and dragged it over to get it where you want it to be. Uh, let's start out by naming it. I'm gonna double click on the nameplate and I'm gonna call it drum submix and so right there i can see the name of it now it's going to be my drum submix so at this point it's created and there's just two things you have to do number one you have to go to all those tracks that you want to be affected and you have to go to their outputs and route them to a bus you have to pick the same bus for each of those tracks and then number two um, you have to go to this um, drum submix track and select the input on it to be the same as the output on those uh, other tracks. So first of all, let's start with the kick. I'm going to click on the kick here. Um, now, when you're working with submixes, it's always with the buses. So you want to go to the bus menu and I'm going to pick bus one and two. So I've just selected a bus for that track. It's bus one and two. Only nine more tracks to go because I have 10 drum tracks here. So you can do it one at a time like we're doing right here. Or if you want to save time, you could highlight all the tracks that you want to affect and do it once for all of them. So now on the bottom, I've highlighted, I've selected all the remaining tracks right there. And now I'm going to come back to this uh, output menu. But before I click on it, don't click on it yet. Before you click on it, take these two fingers here and put them down on shift and option together. So you're gonna hold shift and option at the same time. I'm gonna click down shift and option. And now I'm gonna click on that output. And now I'm gonna select the same bus that I selected on the other one, bus one and two. I'm selecting it, I'm letting go. And now the cool thing is it just routed all of those highlighted tracks to bus one and two. So I don't have to do it individually one at a time. So remember that time saver, option shift when you're selecting those buses and then it will be applied to, the, to all the tracks at the same time. 
So now I have all my drum tracks uh, prepared. I'm going to include this kick track uh, in that group again. So now I'm coming back to the drum submix track. And now I go to the input of that track. And on the input, I have to come down to the bus and find the same bus that I just selected for the outputs of those drum tracks, which is bus one and two. And so now the input of my submix is bus one and two. The outputs of my drum tracks are bus one and two. So now I have created a submix. And if I push play, you'll hear the drums. But now I can pull the drums up and down with this fader right here. So if I'm down, you can't hear the drums at all. If I go up, it's way too loud. So anyway, so now I, that's how you do it. I have a submix created for my drum tracks that allows me to control all the drums together. And just so you know, at this point, yes, you can go into the individual drum tracks and you can uh, adjust them to different levels. Um, and then when you use this submix track, it's gonna, it's gonna carry that adjustment forward. So let's go ahead and create a couple more submixes. Let's do the guitars next. So I have an acoustic guitar and I have an electric guitar in my mix. I'm gonna highlight, uh, highlight both of them or select them both. And just so you know, holding shift down while you select will allow you to select multiple. If you just click on a nameplate, you'll have one selected. If you click on it and then push shift down and then click next to it, you'll have both of them or however many you wanna have. And if you skip some empty ones in between and go far away, it will fill in all the ones that are in between and click those two. And that's all just using the shift button. So I'm gonna get electric guitar and acoustic guitar. And now I'm gonna create an aux track. Now both of these tracks are stereo, so I'm going to make sure this aux track is also stereo. Aux input, push create. And now I'm going to name this one guitar sub, guitar sub mix. Okay, now I got to do the outputs on it. And so I'm going to come here. Well, first of all, I'm going to highlight both of them again so that I'll, I'll just have to do it once. I'm going to come here to the mix bus. Before I push the outs, I'm going to push down option shift. And now here's my bus. I'm going to select bus three and four for this one. And now both of those tracks have bus three and four applied. Now I'm going to the input of my guitar subtrack and I'm going to go to bus three and four on that. And there we have it. Right now, it sounds like, like my electric guitars are, are louder than my acoustic, so I'm going to pull the electrics down and keep the acoustic up and hear it that way. Definitely got more acoustic now, maybe a little more electric in there. Okay. So anyway, but now I, I did it. I created another sub mix, and, and that's how you do it. So let's talk a little bit about grouping now. And to do this, I'm going to come over here to the, the, uh, the edit window. And here's all my audio files that I have on the tracks. Here's all the drum tracks up here. And down here, I have my guitar tracks and my vocal tracks. Um, I'm going to pull this over a little bit so you can see it more in the center of the screen. Over here on the side, you have what's called the groups menu or the groups window. And right now there, there's no groups in this track, um, but you can create groups. And when you do that, it'll, it's another way of grouping tracks together so that you can affect different things in them. Um, so I'm going to show you just by creating a track really quick. I'm going to create a, a group track for the drums this way. So I'm going to start by going uh, selecting kick. And I'll go all the way down to room and I'm going to push shift and click and now I've got all of them selected all at once. And now I'm going to get this arrow right here and go to new group You see how there's that arrow right where the groups menu is and that's how you can create a group really quickly just click on that arrow. And um, in this dialog box on the right hand side, it shows me the tracks I selected from the drums. 
And on the left hand side, it shows me all the other tracks in my session that if I want to, I could add them into this group by hitting the add button or the remove. All I'd have to do is select something then I could push add. But I'm not gonna add anything because I already have selected everything I want in this group. But up here at the top, I have a chance of naming it. So I'm gonna name this drums. So I'll know that this is my drum group. I'm gonna push okay. And now my drums group shows up right there. And I, 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 I created a mix group for the drums. Um, something that happens when you create a mix group is in the, uh, the, uh, the mix window, it shows you the mix group. So here's all the drum tracks in my mix window. And right here, um, it shows you which group they're a part of. It says drums above each of these drum tracks. On these other tracks, it says no group, no group, no group, because right now they're not grouped together in any group, but the drums are grouped together. Let's create another track. This time I'm gonna create a track for the guitars. So I'm gonna select both of these guitars and instead of using the drop down arrow, which I could do every time, I'm also you can also use the track menu and just go track group. And when you go to track group, it takes you to that same place. And, uh, and I'm gonna call this group guitars. And then I'm gonna push okay down at the bottom. And let's create one more group with the vocals because we have a few vocal tracks. So I'm gonna select all these vocals right here. And, uh, and now I'm gonna go Command G, a keyboard command. I'm gonna push Command, push the letter G. And then once again, I get that same dialog box popping up. Uh, I'm gonna call this group vocals. And there I have it. I have uh, all three groups created. Now, first of all, all of these groups are highlighted or selected right now. See how they're blue? Um, that means that they're on, they're active, they're selected or they're enabled. And I am going to click them off. Now they are off. They're just dark gray, just like the background. And, and so they're off. So what's the difference between on and off? Well, let's start with them on to show you. And you just click on them, just one click will turn them on and off. And now let's go over here to uh, the drums and, and push play. Now here's the cool thing about these groups is when you group things together, you can click on one fader and it will move all the faders together at the same time. So the advantage there is that once you set the levels of everything on your drums, for example, there's a relationship between each fader and you have those faders set in that certain spot because you want to keep the relationships for the faders as they are. But sometimes when you're mixing, you have to go back and tweak things again. And so once again, you don't have to adjust every single fader to get the right balance. If you group them together like this and you just want to pull them down just a little bit, you can just pull all of them down together just a little bit. The sub mix that we created is still working here. But the submix fader is only going to affect the overall output of all those tracks, whereas when they're grouped together like this, you can affect their relative output to each other before they, they get routed to the rest of the session. So anyway, very cool. Here's the guitar tracks. They're grouped together. So if I pull one of the guitar tracks, both of the guitar tracks are affected. Here's the vocal tracks. They're grouped together. So same thing, if I pull one of them, they all move at the same time. So now I'm gonna turn off the groups and when they're off, I'm gonna go and do the same thing. <clears throat> Here's the vocal group. And if I grab a fader, it just moves that one fader. It does not move the other faders of the group. So in order to move all the faders all together, you have to have that group selected and have it turned on. So here's our groups again. Now I have them turned on. I'm going to select them all. Now, it's, there's other th things you could do to affect these groups. If you pull this up, you could see you could suspend all the groups. So maybe you don't want to be working with groups for a while for whatever reason. You can suspend them. Suspend them. You can modify the groups. You know, if you want to add different instruments into them or take instruments out. Um, and uh, also, you can delete groups. 
So if you want to delete a group, you just select on one and you can right click on it and just push delete. And as soon as you do that, it's going to say, do you, are you sure you really want to delete it? But, um, but yeah, so you can delete these groups if you need to and if you want to go back and do that. So anyway, you can modify the groups by doing that. Um, and that's uh, that pretty much wraps up all we're going to do for groups today. There's just one more thing to talk about. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second. So the last thing we're going to talk about is the subject of dithering. So with mixing, you do all this work, you've already recorded it. Now you've mixed it, you've got everything ready and you're ready to get a professional sounding audio file bounced out of your mix. So you probably already know how to do that. Um, but a very common thing to do is to add a dither onto your master track before you mix. Um, it's something that has a history back with CDs when CDs were used a whole bunch. Um, CDs were only 16 bit. That was their bit depth on a, on a CD. So what happens if you're working on a track that is in a larger bit depth? Well, that's right. it's going to be a higher quality, right? 24 bit depth or 32 floating bit depth or something. But in order to get it on the CD, you have to bounce it down in, in bit depth to do that. So they came up with this dithering idea. And, uh, and, and when you do that, it helps it sound better because what happens during a bounce down without dithering is it creates quantization artifacts. They're little pops and hisses and things you don't want in your recording when you're um, switching the bit depth during a bounce down. So dithering can avoid that. Now, it's still customary to add dithering to your tracks today, even though you're probably not going to make a CD with what you do. Um, I remember in my recording class, the teacher just said, always add dither, add dither every time you're finishing up your session. So I'll just say it here right now. Make sure you add dither to your master fader track. And then I just want to read a little bit out of the book to help clarify this. Uh, this is on page 283 of the Pro Tools 110 book. To maintain the highest possible audio quality when reducing bit depth, it is necessary to apply dither to your audio. Dither is a form of randomized noise used to minimize quantization artifacts in digital audio systems. So it minimizes the noise, the quantization artifacts uh, when you're bouncing out. By introducing dithering, you can reduce quantization artifacts with very low level noise minimizing artifacts as audio reaches low levels. With dithering, you can make a trade-off between signal-to-noise performance and less apparent artifacts. Um, so anyway, it's going to make things sound better. That's kind of why you do it. So, um, so let me show you how to do it then. I'm going to share my screen one more time and we're going to add a dither onto this. It's really, really very easy. Very, very easy. Here is my master fader track right here on the far side. I'm just going to come up to the insert here and I'm going to go to um, to my plugins and there's a plugin that's called dither. It's just right there in the main list and you have an op option of doing a dither or a power dither. I'm going to choose the power dither and when that happens, it opens up this uh, this window box with different settings. Um, in the bottom part of this box, you can choose the bit depth. So right here, it's 16 bit, right? Or 20 bit, you can decide between those two. So this is the bit depth that it would be dithered down to. Um, and then there's also a noise shaping type, type one, type two, and type three. So um, depending on what you're looking for in this final mix, you can decide which type you want. And there's more information in the textbook about what those types are and how they sound if you want to read up about it. Uh, but anyway, that's all you have to do. And once your dither is there, it is there and it's on. And now you just go to, to the bounce, just file bounce mix and, and away you go from there, you can bounce your mix. All right, so that wraps up the video for today. Thank you for watching and please let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you later.